Why do the hands of the doomsday clock inch ever closer to the stroke of midnight? What drives our world today and how do its events shape our collective tomorrow? In the early days of 2023, a series of events unfolded that marked the course of human history. As the year began, the world watched as Richard Barnett, the man infamous for resting his feet on Nancy Pelosi's desk during the January 6th riots, was convicted on eight counts in a Washington court. Meanwhile, across the Pacific, Japan found itself teetering on the edge of societal collapse. The country's falling birth rate and high life expectancy prompted Prime Minister Fumio Kishida to issue a stark warning to the Japanese parliament. In a shocking revelation, Adani Enterprises, owned by the world's third richest man, Gautam Adani, lost a staggering $108 billion in value. This drastic decline followed a report by Hindenburg Research alleging stock manipulation and accounting fraud. The same day, Afghanistan reported its coldest winter in a decade, claiming the lives of at least 124 people and 70,000 livestock. This harsh winter cut off many areas, rendering them inaccessible and isolated. In a grim reminder of the state of our world, the doomsday clock was reset to just 90 seconds until midnight. This marked the closest it has ever been since its inception in 1947. The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists cited the war in Ukraine as a contributing factor. In South America, Peruvian Prime Minister Dina Boluarte called for a national truce after seven weeks of violent protests following Pedro Castillo's removal from office. These upheavals resulted in at least 50 casualties. On a lighter note, third baseman Scott Rowland, famed for his time with the Philadelphia Phillies and St. Louis Cardinals, was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Across the world, America and Germany announced their decision to send powerful battle tanks to Ukraine. This move was a direct response to Russia's invasion of the country. Down in the Pacific, Chris Hipkins was sworn in as Prime Minister of New Zealand, following the resignation of Jacinda Ardern. In a shocking case of police brutality, five ex-Memphis police officers were charged with the murder of Tyre Nichols, who they beat at a traffic stop. International Holocaust Remembrance Day saw representatives from various countries gather at the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp site. Among the attendees was Doug Emhoff, the first Jewish spouse of a U.S. president or vice president. In a tragic turn of events, the city of Auckland in New Zealand declared a state of emergency as a tropical storm brought record levels of rain, major flooding, and four deaths. Meanwhile, in Western Australia, an urgent search began for a tiny radioactive capsule which had dropped out of a truck during a 1,400-kilometer journey. In the world of sports, the Australian Open saw Belarusian Arena Sabalenka and Serbian Novak Djokovic secure their respective titles in women's and men's tennis. Tragedy struck in Peshawar, Pakistan, when a suicide bomb blast at a mosque for police officers killed at least 100 people and injured 157. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky claimed that Russia had begun its big revenge with assaults around Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine. To conclude the month, Pope Francis landed in Kinshasa, marking the first papal visit to the Democratic Republic of Congo since 1985. These events, occurring in such rapid succession, remind us of the interconnectedness of our world and the delicate balance that holds it together. From political upheavals to societal collapses, from financial downfalls to environmental crises, from victories in sports to the ever-present threat of war, the happenings of early 2023 serve as a stark reminder of the world we live in and the challenges we face.